Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi Yuma Ayin Tes. We begin at the last line of Ayin Chesmet Beis. The Mishnah told us, What is the shear? Achila Nim Kippur food, which has the volume, the shear of a Kaseves, a date, Hagas, a large size date. The Mishnah adds, Kamoya Ukigari as the date itself and its pit. There are two ways to understand this Mishnah. By Rav Papa, he presented the following shadow. Kechaseves hagasa she'amru. The kechaseves that we spoke about, bigari nasa, was it referring to the date with its pit inside? That's also included in the shi'ur. Or belay gari nasa. Or perhaps without its pit. Explains Rashi on the top line. Bigari nasa. Or shaloy bigari nasa. V'hodik tani mas nisan uchi gari nasa. When the Mishnah says, Kamayo ki gari nasa mi boilei. Hechi ka'amar. Question is, what does the Mishnah mean? Kamaya ukigarinos yachad. You combine the pit and the flesh together to provide that shiur for Yom Kippur. So the food that one eats needs to be equal in volume to the actual fruit part of the date and also to its pit part. Oy dilma hachigamar. Or perhaps differently. Kamaya oy. The Bach adds, oy kigarinos. You don't need that much food. As long as the food equals either one of the two, the flesh, the fruit part, or its pit. A date has a rather large sized pit. So it's either or. That's considered enough of a shear for Yom Kippur. Taisus brings another pshat in the name of the Aruch. The question is, do we figure in the space between the fruit of the date and the pit itself? Tzorich lemaich es chalala. Meaning, do you have to actually press the flesh against the pit to produce the kaisevis used as a shear of Yom Kippur? So that's what kamoyo ukigar nasa means. Bigar nasa. It means you have to press it against the garin to produce that rather smaller sized date. Now it's missing its little uh, space inside. And that's going to be the shear or but loy garinosa means just leave it as is, with the gap, the space between the flesh part and the pit part. So this whole thing, in totality, provides the shear of Yom Kippur. Those are the two tzadim in the Gemara. But Ravashi, he had a similar shadow regarding a different shear. At some kesayr, we know that a small sized bone of a mace, the size of a barley. It's matami b'maga b'maso. Add some kesoira. When we spoke about a barley, what type of barley are we speaking about? With its skin or without its skin? Bikli pasa, with its shell still intact, or bilikli pasa, or with its skin removed, which is actually smaller. Belacha, or bivesha. We're speaking about a fresh barley, which is actually larger, or bivesha, or dried out, in which case it's small. So we're not sure. Now, Ravashi lemi boile hadra papa. Ravasha never contemplated a puppet's shiloh. Kaseva sa gasa, do we mean smaller, bigger, with a pit, without a pit? Gasa, it's mar. Mishra says, Kaseva sa gasa, as big as you can get. Kokama de gasa, the biggest you can get, with its pit, with the gap, with the space. That's the sheer Achilam Kippur. I want to say so on the point of Achilam Kippur is to dispel the inui. So, apparently, you need a rather large size sheer for that. The fact that the Mishnah used the word Gasa, that indicates to us that go large, as big as you can get. So you have no Shaila as far as that. In fact, the Gemara later uh, seems to follow this approach, that the Kriseves includes its pit. So that explains where Rav Ashi didn't agree with Rav Papa. Rav Papa, on the other hand, Rav Ashi. Rav Papa never had the Shaila of Rav Ashi regarding the barley. It's pretty clearly defined, Rav Papa would hold. Why? Lacha. To say that it's a moist, fresh barley, shibailas mikri. That's not called soira. That's referred to as shibailas. So, of course, it's dried. Shaloib klipasa, on the other hand, to say it's without a skin, ushla mikri. That's referred to with the word ushla. So, since the Chacham used the word kisoira, etzim kisoira, that indicates a dried barley with its skin intact. 
Okay, so we speak about Kesev as Hagasa. How do we, how do we uh, relate to it on our terms? We know about Kezayis, Kebetza. Where does Kesev as Hagasa fit in? In that, uh, in that ladder. Omar Rav, Omar of Yehuda. Kesev as Hagasa she'amru. Yesevim Kebetza. You meant to know that this Kesev as Hagasa is actually larger in volume than a Kebetza. Now, why is it? Why is it so? Is that when it comes to other Yisurim, the Shir Achila is Kezayis. That's standard. When it comes to Yom Kippur, one is not over, not Torah at least, until he has a Kesevah Sagasa, which, according to this approach, is greater than a Kebetza. Why? Answers the Gemara. V'kim luhu the Rabbon. It was known to the Rabbon, to Bahochem Yasvedaite. This amount of food is needed to bring Yishuv Hadas, to calm him down, to put him at ease, to make him feel satisfied. But less than this sheer of food, although it's Achila, but it doesn't accomplish Yishuv Hadas. Loi it doesn't settle him down. And if he doesn't come to the point of Yishuv Hadas, he had not been over. Achila on Yom Kippur, explains Rashi. Seven lines from the top. Kimu Rabbanon. Asks Rashi, "Va'afagav the kol shir achilas iser because I see, generally, achilas iser is kazayis. Why is it different? Hanu mili hechad eksiv achila. That's when we speak about achila. A ma'isa achila requires a shir kazayis of oichel. Aval hocha, as opposed to Yom Kippur, asher loy to unexiv. Ter warns against the spelling inoi, being mavatal inoi. The chol kama dole miyas v'dayt inoihu." Even if he ate a kazais, but he's not settled down. He's not at ease. He's still experiencing inui. So unless he has a kaseva sagasa, he was not mavatal inui. It's interesting that the Gemara in Erevin actually tells us that the din of kaseva sagasa in Kippur is learned from a Pasuk or the Sinai. Here the Gemara presents it as Kim Lulu Rabbanon. It was known to the Rabbanon. And for some answer, we knew from the Allah of the Sinai, and it was based on a Pasuk, that Kiseves is the given shear of Achila and Yom Kippur. But what type of Kiseves? Small, medium, huge, jumbo? This is the point of al We go big. Kiseves Hagas. Up until that point, Chachamim knew definitively. It doesn't provide Yishev Adas, which is a prerequisite for Yom Kippur. Says the more, is that so? That what? The Kesev Sagasa is larger than a Kabetza? Listen to this. Mace, we have a Kasha from a Mishnah in Sukkah. Masa. There was a story of a view of the Rabbi Yechonan Mezak. Little Mesatashal. They brought Rabbi Yechonan Mezak something to taste, some, uh, some of the cooked dish, a small amount of food. Rabbi Gamliel, they offered him Shtekai Savis, two dates. With lishal mayim and a pitcher of water. This was on sukkahs. Generally, if it's only a snack, you can eat it out of the sukkah. But they insisted on taking it up to the sukkah. For amru he'elum the sukkah, take it up to the sukkah. Rashi in Shabbos says the sukkahs were usually positioned on their rooftops. Take it up to the sukkah. So they insist on eating these in the sukkah. V'tani la, and the Bryce explained on this. Look, mishal lochakach. It wasn't required a piyalacha because it was only a achilas araya, a snack. It didn't need sukkah. Elisha wrote to lahachmar al atzmar. These chachamim wanted to be machmar on themselves. They want to really live in the sukkah, even snack in the sukkah. In fact, the Gemara sukkah tells us the chiddush is it's not Mexic Europe. It doesn't look like it's like a boastful act. I want to be machmar. No, it's acceptable. It's fine. So once a pshat chachamim are are very particular about what they eat. They don't just snack. Everything is important. Everything has significance. So they treat even a small snack, like a uh, achila that has significance, achila skva, go take it to the sukkah. In any case, we see from the Mishnah here that this type of volume of food, is not considered achila skva. So apparently it's less than a kibetz. Because we know that a kibetz of food 
is considered an achilas kva. It takes on the uh, the characteristics of a, of a meal. How do we know this? Continue on. Okshenos and the loy derab tzadik. And when they offered derab tzadik, oichel pachas mekebeitza food, bread, which was less than a sheer kebeitza, what did he do? The Taliban map. Firstly, he didn't wash his hands. He just handled it with a cloth, with a napkin. He ate it outside the sukkah, because less than a kibetzah. Nor did he bake birch samoz and following that meal. Let's go over to Rashi explains these things. Five lines from the bottom. Metalib map of achli. He says there were three things included here. Shloisha kulin noagboy. Reb Tzadik applied three leniencies. Achashlim natol yadav. He didn't wash his hands from tilsa daim. Elba mapa karach yadav. He wrapped his hands with a mapa to handle the food. Mishma ninus hadas. Because he was particular. He, it was just a hygiene concern. Tesis actually says. Uh, he was concerned about uh, metame the food. In any case, he didn't do it until he said That was one kula. He ate out of the sukkah. And thirdly, he didn't make birch samazin because he held the shear of bread that requires birch samazin as a kapetza. This was less than a kapetza. So what do we see? Less than a kapetza could be eaten out of the sukkah. Apparently, food that has a share of kibetzah needs a sukkah. Right? Pretty clear from Rabbi Tzaddik. Because it was less than a kibetzah, it was okay out of the sukkah. Apparently, if it's kibetzah or more, buy a sukkah. Right? Now, let's go back to the first story. Two kaisaves, two dates, were considered less than a kibetzah. They could have had it out of the sukkah. They were machmer to take it up to the sukkah. Apparently, two kaisavais are less than a kibetzah. How could you say that a kaisavais sagas on Yom Kippur is more than a kibetzah? Says the Gmarvi, Sakadaitach, kaisavais sagas on Shom. He said in a kibetzah, if you're a Buddha, tells, tells us that a kaisavais sagas is considered more than a kibetzah. How does this work? If two dates, suppose they're average sized dates, okay, they're not jumbo dates, but two of them together don't equal a kibetza, one big one will be more than a kibetza. So you're jumping two steps from less than a kibetza to a kibetza to more? How do you get to there? Right? If two dates together, medium sized dates, only equal less than a kibetza. How would one large size date get you to more than a kibetza? If you want to figure the, the gap is too wide. It's, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's not svara. That would be so. You say I'm a kibetza. So coming to you that a kibetza sagasa is greater than a kibetza, how does this work with the Mishnah here? If two dates without pits, we're assuming they had the two dates without pits. Right? That's what they ate. So the fruit part of two dates are less than a kibetza. Kaseva sagasa vigari nasa. Mihavi yiserim kibetza. Can you say that a large sized date, even with its pit, will be greater than a kibetza? So again, you're working with three levels. Right? Less than a kibetza, kibetza, and more than a kibetza. If two dates without their pits, meaning just the fruit part, equal less than a kibetza, how could you say that a large size date with a pit will be not only a kibetza, but more than a kibetza? Omer b'yermiya, in, 100%, yeah, it works. Why? Because the pit itself, actually, occupies more space, at least the dates that they had, occupies... More sp- takes up more space than the fruit part. For instance, the fruit part, let's say, would be 40% of the total volume of this date, and the pit portion, 60%. If that's the case, it works. Then, yeah. Two smaller sized dates without their pits. Let have a kubetza. That won't get you to a kubetza. But when you have a large size date with a pit included, ah, that's for sure. 
more than a kibetza. Havi is serum kibetza. That gets you beyond the kibetza. So if we break it down like this, we have two small dates without pits. So we have fruit and fruit. Each one, let's say, is only 40% of its total volume, right? Let's say the pit takes up most of the uh, of the space here. Pit is 60%, fruit is 40%. So you have two medium-sized dates of just fruit without pit. So it's, let's say, 40% of one date, 40% of the other. On the other hand, you have a Kaseva Sagasa with the Garin. And you have two advantages there. Why? Because it's a larger date to start off with. So the fruit part of that larger date is already bigger than the fruit part of the smaller date. But not only that, you have a pit in there as well. A pit is even more than, more than the fruit part of that larger date. So it's, uh, it's 60% of the, that larger date. So that pit is way bigger than the fruit part of the uh, smaller dates. So now you understand how you can bump it up two levels. Two smaller dates without pits are less than a kibetz. One larger date with a pit included gets you up to a kibetz and beyond the kibetz. Right? You have two advantages. You moved it up two levels beyond the smaller size dates without their pits. So on the one hand we have stakely service less than a kibetz because there were small ones and without pits. Now you have Kaseva Sagasim Kippur, which is greater than Kibetza, because the fruit part is bigger, it's a bigger date, and the uh, pit part is there as well, and that's really big. Amr Papa, Hainu de Amr Inchi. Now you understand the common phrase, Trey Kabi de Tamri. If you have two Kav of dates with uh, pits included there, how much pit do you have? Chad kaba, you have one kav, the kashyais of the pits, but sereach and a bit left over. Right? So when you have two kav of dates, pits included, how much do the uh, pits take up? Even more than a kav? A kav and sereach and a bit left over. Because the pit portion is greater in size than the food portion. Okay, so we had a kasha. And we answer the kash. A reader was one who told us that a gazevas agasa, used for Yom Kippur purposes, is greater than a kabetza. We seem to have a kasha. Mishnah says, two kaisavas don't even equal a kabetza. Answer is, here we're speaking about a large one with its pit. Rav Amar, I'll give you another terrence. Hasam Hainu Taimah. You know why? By sukkah. He didn't have to eat the two kaisavas in the sukkah. Perhaps we're speaking about even more than a kibetza, right? Kisavas agasa is more than a kibetza. Two smaller kisavas more than a kibetza. Hosum hainu time. The reason why he was able to eat it out of the sukkah is because it's fruit. Mishum da havalu peri. It's peri. O peri lebo is sukkah. You never eat fruit in the sukkah. It's not achilas kva. So when adin, they can eat it out of the sukkah, regardless of how much fruit they're eating. Meisve, got a cash on this. Omar Rabbi, kishahayi nu laim dem Torah. Eitz Rabbi Lazar ben Shamoa. When we were learning Torah by Rabbi Lazar, heviu lefanenu teinim vanovim. They offered us dates, and grapes. Vachal nu machilas arechutz al sukkah. We had it out of the sukkah because because it was only a small amount. Achilas aray, which is considered a snack, less than a kibbutz. So we infer from here. Achilas arayin. A diak is. It was only muta out of the sukkah because it was less than a kabetz. It was achilas aray. Achilas kvaloi. Apparently, if it would have been a permanent meal, meaning if this fruit would have equaled a kabetz, you have to eat it in the sukkah. The kashan rava, who says Paris can be eaten out of the sukkah, regardless of how much it is. Says more loy. That's not pshat in the price. Ema interpreted as follows. Achalnum. We ate a large supply of these fruit out of the sukkah because regardless of how much it is, it's always considered like a snack. Parents don't have a chashivas, they don't need sukkah. In line with Rav's shita. 
achalnu achilas kva. We ate a large amount of this, uh, these fruits. Kabeitza, more. Vachalnu pas achilas arai ba'adayu chuzosuk. We added some bread, but there we had to make sure it was less than a kabeitza. It was achilas arai. And that allowed us to have it out of the sukkah. But as per the fruit itself, that can be eaten out of the sukkah, regardless how much it is. Leva Messiah, they perhaps will have a riot to Rabbi, that pears can be eaten out of the sukkah. See, Rabbi Lezer in Masech sukkah tells us, one needs to eat 14 su'udois inside his sukkah throughout Yom Tov. More later there, changes it. But in the Havamina, that's what Rabbi Lezer seemed to say. The Gemara says, suppose he missed one of the meals. He could always make it up later throughout Yom Tov. If he made up that missed meal, even using Targima, as she says, lift on things that accompany bread, fish, meat, he's Yaitse. It's good enough for a make up meal, even though he didn't have bread. Actually, Toysha says, um, someone to bring a raya from this Gemara that for Suda Shlishis on Shabbos, since it's not one of the main meals, night and morning are the main meals, but the extra meal, the Suda Shlishis, what we call Shalashudis, uh, can consist of even Mini Targima, just as the, um, the Suda here can be made up using these materials. He says, no, there's a difference. On Shabbos, you meant to have three Suudais, because the Torah mentions the word Hayoim, Ichlu Hayoim, by the man, three times. Says Taisus, you need bread. Why? Because the man was bim kaim pas, was a staple food. It served as bread. And therefore, he says you have to have three times bread. And then he says, well, even if you propose that you can be yaitse with mini targima, fusuda shlishes, that's only basar, dogim, but peris won't work. As the Gemara here will be medayik that uh, certainly peris, which is not even as choshev as fish or meat, cannot be used to make up a lost meal. And likewise, for shalashudas, you can't use it either. That's tasteless. In any case, the Gemara presents this as a raya to Rafa. So if he missed a meal, he can make it up with mini targim. If that is so, that Paris require a sukkah, you have to eat it in a sukkah, listening Paris. The Brysa should have said a greater chiddush. You can make up the lost meal using Paris. We're looking to make up a, a, a missed sukkah meal. The Brysa should have said a greater chiddush. That Paris can provide that make-up meal because Paris needs a sukkah. It's considered a sukkah meal. Apparently, it doesn't need sukkah. You can eat it out of the sukkah. Therefore, it doesn't count as a make-up meal. That's a right to run. So it's more, not necessarily. My mini targima, when the Bryce says mini targima, it's an undefined term. Peri, perhaps, peris. Perhaps it is referring to fruit, which require a sukkah and can be used to make up that uh, missed meal. Bibayasema, another shot in the Bryce, but Asrud al Shrihi Peri was speaking about it. And uh, a locale which um, doesn't really have much fruit, and the I don't want to relate to fruit, which are uncommon in that area. So you relate it to I mean, targima, uh, f- fish, and, and, and meat. But perhaps uh, pears do require a sukkah. You don't really have a riot to rub. Okay, so let's summarize this Gemara. What is the share of Kisavas and Gasaf Yom Kippur? Says Rabbi Yehuda. Greater in size than even a Kabetza. The Gemara explained. It's meant to bring Yishuv Hadas, Asher to Una, only a bit of Inoi. And therefore, we require a greater share than usual. And according to Rabbi Yehuda, that means more than a kibetz. Rabbi Zvid Amar, he disagrees. This Keseva Sagasa described in the Mishnah, Chaserim Kibetz. It's actually less than a kibetz. Now, the Mephoshim ask, is this a machlekes in reality? In Metzius? Hard to believe that this is a machlekes Amaroim regarding the... the uh, the reality of, of a large size date. Is it this? Is it that? So the Farshim explain it isn't. It isn't the Shaila and Mitzias. How to measure a large size date. The question is, what constitutes a large size date? You see, there aren't really uh, different 
sizes, different classes, different categories. You have dates running from the smallest all the way to the biggest. Where do you draw the line? What's considered small, what's considered big? Now, the truth is that whenever we speak about a kazayis, a kabetz, a kisavis, the mission of Kalim speaks about averaging it out. And the kazayis isn't going to follow the biggest one you find or the smallest one you find. It's bein noini, the average sized date. Here as well, kisavis agasa is referring to a jumbo date, but an average jumbo date. So how do you define that? How do you determine what's considered large size dates from which you can draw an average? Oh, so that's the shayla. Where do you place the demarcation line? So according to Rabbi Yehuda, he, um, he picks up the, uh, the demarcation line. He says, once you get to a certain size, all the way up there, that's when Kaseva Sagasa begins. That begins the category. That's classified. From there on, it's classified as a jumbo date. Then you take all that and you average it out, which according to him, results in a share of Yosem Kibetz, whereas of Zvid sort of lowers the threshold. You begin viewing this as a Kaseva Sagasa, meaning from here on, so he takes the smaller ones as well into that category, in which case the average Kesevus Agas will end up being smaller in size, less than a Kabetz. So that's his sheet. Helping the riot to that. That's not. Mishnah in Psachim says, what is the shiur of Bal Yiro'eu Bal Yimotz? Beishama Imer, Sa'ar Bekezayis. Depends what type of chametz. Sa'ar, sourdough, a leavening agent, which is a very concentrated form of chametz. If one should have that in his home on Pesach, he's over on Bali Roa, Bali Matzah, as soon as it has a sheer kazais. Chametz, however, ordinary chametz, because it says, if it has a sheer of a, of a date, then he's over Bali Roa, Bali Matzah. So according to the Shammai, there's a difference between different types of chametz. But you know, we ask the Kasha my time, but the Shammai, how does he know to be Machal between this type of chametz and that type of chametz? I think one assumes, Rashi will explain, that we usually work with a sheer kazais, because Bal Yiro Bal is learned from Achila, just as Achila is the kazais, so too is Bal Yiro. So how did Beishame arrive at a sheer kisavis by Chametz? My time at Beishame. Answer is, Nichtav Rachman Chametz. Why does the Torah have to, have to spell out? You shouldn't have chametz in your possession. You shouldn't have so'er. The Pasuk didn't have to spell it out. The Pasuk could have simply said chametz. Look at boy, sir. You didn't have to spell out so'er as well. I would have just said it on my own. Of course. If chametz is aser, so'er certainly. Oma chametz, she'enchim utzei kasha. Aser v'kazayiz. Look, if chametz which is not really a, a severe form of chametz, it's more of a watered-down type. It's also to have it in your home once you have a kazayis. So'er shechemutz ekasha lekoshke. Wouldn't you think that so'er, which is a higher level, a, a more concentrated form of chametz, is also as well? Why does the Torah have to list them individually? Oh, midi palginu rachman, the fact that the Torah had to spell them both out. Limdalach, by doing so, the Torah is teaching you Shi'uri Shalzeh, like Shi'uri Shalzeh. The Shi'urim are not similar. Su'ar be Kazayis, as soon as you have a Kazayis of Su'ar, that constitutes the Isar of Bali Ra'ev. The Chomet, however, be Kazayis. Over there, he's not over until he has a larger amount of Chomets. Let's go over to Rashi, 10 lines from the top. Su'ar be Kazayis. The fact that the Torah needed to spell them out, that's indicative of the fact that the shear of Chametz is larger than the Sur, meaning, Umomekel, of course. It's not over until he gets to the larger shear. That's exactly what the Torah mentioned Sur. The Torah had the Torah not written Sur. And it would have been learned out from Chametz Havamin, I would say, Dai, love him in Adin, Leis Kanida. When you learn A from B, A has to be similar to B. You can't surpass B, who's serving as a source. And since Sawyer is being derived from Chametz, 
you couldn't be machmer by soir over chametz for lo mechayiv lo el b'shul rabba. So now the Torah spells them both out. What does it tell you? The shurim are different, and by chametz you only chayiv if you have a large quantity. Lahochi kasvi rachman lechiyuve akazayis. That's why the Torah had to write them both out to tell you. On the one hand, chametz has a bigger shear. On the other hand, soir has a shear kazayis. Dealing with pachas but kazayis like a memer. Now certainly you can't go down less than a kazayis. Deloitte he reiyo chamur machila. Can be machmer by reiyo more than achila. The stam achila kazayis. Eating as a kazayis certainly reiyo can't be more severe than that. Al karchach. So the conclusion is, HaChomer B'Kazayis, Soer, which is Chomer, works with Asher Kazayis. V'Akal, Chomer, which is Kal, B'Yoyis M'Kazayis, greater than a Kazayis. Now, what is the share of Chomer? Kisabis, right? So we're looking for a share which is a level higher than a Kazayis. Soer is more Chomer, that's Kazayis. Chomer, which is more Kal, you need more to be over. Let's assume it's the next level. Right? Says the Gemara in the first line, first wide line. Now let's go back to our Sugi. This is Rav Zvid speaking. I'm going to prove, I'm going to disprove Rabbi Yehuda, who says that a Kiseva Sagasa is greater than a Kibetza. If that's so, Kiseva Sagasa Shamro, Yisera Mikibetza. So the starting point is Sa'ir Bekazayas. Chametz needs more. So it's the next level. Which shear do we shame apply to Chametz? Kisevis. One second, you've gone too far. You've upgraded many levels. You've gone from Kazais, past Kibetz, all into Kisevis. What right do you have to do that? If Kisevis Agas is greater than the Kibetz, Michti, let's analyze. Let's take a look. Beshamay Shi'ura, the Nafesh Mekazais Kamahadri. The Shammai are looking for what? Looking for a share which is a bit greater than a Kazais. Soar gets Kazais. Chametz, which is more kal, needs more to be over. We assume it's the next step up. Listen to Kibetz. They should have said Kibetz. What right do we have to apply even a greater share? You're not over until you have a Kiseves, which is more than Kibetz? How do you know that? Plus, they never said Kiseves. Plus, it indicated to us that Chametz is more kal. You need more, a bit more. Kabetz, how do you go all the way to Kisavis? Vinamiki Adadi Ninu. That's one thing. Right? Ravzid proves that Kisavis cannot be greater than Kabetz. Then you're going to prove that you can't even suggest that Kisavis is equal in size, equal in volume to Kabetz. Right? He said it's less, right? You, you can't say it's equal. Vinamiki Adadi Ninu, even if you'll suggest that. Kisavis is equal in volume to Kibetza. Nisni Kibetza. If that was so, then why would Beishamay describe it as Kisavis, which is an unfamiliar term? It should have simply said Kibetza, which is a more commonly used term. Ah! Elo lav shmami. No? Doesn't this prove my point? Kisavis pchus in Kibetza. Kisavis is less than a Kibetza. So now it makes sense. Soer has a Kisavis. Chametz goes a bit higher, Kisavis, which is the next step. Let's go over to Rashi. 13 lines from the bottom. Mechti beishamai lo yonru ke Kisavis. Ela mishum de bo shir chametz fe mishal soar. They're looking for a shir which is slightly larger than a soar. Shir be Kisavis. Me itzach krolo le mechtevinu. In fact, I tried to spell it out. Tells you that there are two shiurim here. Right? So it's Kazais, Chomet's a bit higher. V'yimatsu shir pachas mekakasevus. V'yas al Kazais. Hayim sharem boy. They would have found a shir less than a Kazais. Greater than a Kazais. They would have used it. Right? They're looking just for the shir which is a bit higher than a Kazais. V'yim kebeitza pachas mekakasevus. Point to you, Rav Yudah. The Kazais is the largest one around. Kubeitza is below Kazais. Listen to Kubeitza. They should have picked Kubeitza. V'yidam ikadad ininu. And even perhaps they'll suggest that Kazais, sorry, that Kibetza and Kesevas are equal in volume. Even if that's the case, it won't either work. Why? Lema Kibetza. Vishama should have said, Kibetza, Shu Shagra Mishnah Yaiser. Miki Kesevas, Lenitumas Eichlan. 
We find kebetza is a more commonly used phrase when it comes to Thomas Eichen. It's around the Mishnayis. They should have used that familiar term over Kesevis. This proves my point. Kesevis is the next one up between Kesevis and Kebetza. That's why he specifically mentioned Kesevis. Responds the Gemara on the fourth white line. Mimai, how do you know that's to be true? You say it in a you know what? It can really be that a Yehuda is right on. A Kesevas Hagasa is greater than a Kebetz. On Yom Kippur, a Kesevas Hagasa is more than a Kebetz. That's not the discussion there. By Chametz. Hastama Kebetz. Shami didn't mention Kesevas Hagasa, a jumbo date. They spoke about a, a typical Kesevas, a medium sized date. And that can have the same value of a kibetz, which is one step above a kazais. That makes sense. So is a kazais. Chametz, the next step is a kibetz. So even if you'll say that they're both the same size, meaning a kibetz, and the kasevis discussed in the Mishnah by Chametz is the same volume, why did he pick the term kasevis, which is an unfamiliar term? It's not a kash. He picked one of the two terms. Perhaps there's a reason why he chose Kesevis, perhaps. Uh, we're speaking about uh, food-related isurim, eating, and balira, which is connected to eating. Don't have it around, so you not come, won't come to eat it. Therefore, he picked the Lashon Kesevis, which is um, eating-related, food-related, like we see by Yom Kippur, as opposed to Kebetza, which is more um, often used for Tumas Eichlin, which is not really a topic of conversation by Chavetz. So perhaps there's a reason why uh, we can explain why he chose Kesevis. But in any case, it's no riot to our discussion. And in Kibbutz, we speak about a Kesevis Hagasa, which perhaps is greater in size than a Kibbutz. Over there, we spoke about a Kesevis Stama, a smaller sized date, which is perhaps equal to a uh, equal or maybe a smaller in size, so says learns. Uh, he has a different gears in the Gemara. It's small than a kibetza. Whatever it is, it's unrelated to our sugya on Yom Kippur. El Mahach says, Zvid, I'll bring you another ride to my shita. Kisavis Agasa for Yom Kippur is less than a kibetza. Ad Kama Mazamin. How much does one have to eat to be chayev in Zimun? Rashi learns. It's a reference to Bricha Samazam. How much does he have to eat? At Kazais. David Abmeir. Kazais is the minimum. That requires bichas amos. Rabbi Yehuda Imer at kabetz a contrary Rabbi Yehuda you have to eat a kabetz to be chayiv bichas amos. But my kamefli, what's the basis to this machlekes? It's based on how to interpret a pasuk. Rabbi Meir Savar v'chalta v'savata v'rachta, right? V'chalta zu achila amas achila v'savata zu shtiya. You eat and drink, and then say bichas amos v'achila bekazayis. Typically, the word achila. First, a shir kazayis, even a shir kazayis obligates one in brichas amos. Rabbi the savar, no, v'chalta v'savat goes together. Achila sheish basvia. Generally, achila is a kazayis. Achalta v'savat, an achila which generates satisfaction, some minimal degree of fullness. Ve'eze is a kabeitza. It's a larger share. You need a kabeitza to achieve that state of at least temporary fullness. Not only that is Chayiv Berchas Hamazon. This is actually in line with Reb Tzaddik, right? We had on the bottom of our Amun Aleph. It was less than a Kabeitza. He didn't make Berchas Hamazon. He had like Reb Yehuda. Only Kabeitza is Machayiv Berchas Hamazon. Okay, so that's the end of the discussion regarding Berchas Hamazon. How does it pertain to us? He says Reb Kabeitza says Reb Zvid. Do you hold that a Kesevas Agasa and Kippur? Is larger than a kabetza. How does this work? Hashta kabetza. Svui maspa. You just told me that a kabetza generates svia, some degree of fullness. Even a kabetza does that. Data la Is it not going to generate yishavadas? Which is what we're trying to achieve on Yom Kippur? Of course it will. It's masbiha. It satiates. It's full. It fills him. Of course it's going to bring Yeshav Adas. Says Rashid. Apparently, 
because if it's a gasa, can't be can't be more than a kabetza. You don't need that much. Kabetza is certainly enough. El lashmami. No, this proves my point that kaisev is a gasa she'amru. Parachas be kabetza. It's actually less than a kabetza. That explains the halacha. So kazayis is achila. The next level. Kabetza maspa. A share kabetza actually brings fullness and satisfies. Kekeseves, which is right in the middle between Kazayis, Maisa Achila, and Kabetza, which is Svia, this Keseves is a bit more than Achila, but it doesn't really achieve fullness, it doesn't really satiate. Miyasvadaiti, it does enough to calm him down, to settle him down, which is the Israelim Kip. So this is Rav Zvid's approach. He says there's Achila, which is Kazayis. Then on Yom Kippur, we need more than Achila, as we explained back in Amun Aleph. It doesn't say Achila on Yom Kippur, it says, Ashalay to Una. It's associated with Yishav Hadas, with settling a person down, with calming him down. Therefore, it says, you need more than Achila, but just a bit more. Because have a Sagasa, which is a bit more than a Kazais, you don't need a Kabetza. You don't need Svi'ah. That's going a bit too far. That explains the Shito. The Kisavah Sagasa is less than a Kibetza. Apparently, of you who the holds, you need more, more than a Kibetza to achieve Yishev Hadas. What does he do with Rav Zvid's Raya? Why would you need more than a Kibetza just to achieve Yishev Hadas? You've already filled yourself, you've already gotten to Svia once you've eaten a Kibetza. Why do you need more? The truth is that Tosfos and Amalaf brings that this whole discussion between Amir and Yehuda regarding the Shir Bech Samazan, it's only Midr Abban. Midr Raisa? One is only Chayim. If he filled himself completely, he had a full meal. He calls it Sviya Gemura. But just a Kazais and Kabetza, it's Chayim Midr Abban. So there are two levels of Sviya, it's pretty clear. It's Sviya Gemura. He had a full meal, he's good to go. Then there's the Kabetza, which Rabbi Yehuda calls Sviya. How does he call it Svia? It doesn't really fill a person. Apparently, it's something called a temporary filling. The Gorn Sukkah speaks about and of, um, Chavav, about a Bar Beirav, um, a Talmud that runs into the Shir, grabs a bite, a Kabetza, to sort of fill him for the moment. It's a temporary fullness. So that's the Svia that a Kabetza generates. And according to you, that's enough to be Machai Berchus HaMazen. So apparently, regarding Yom Kippur, we speak about being Yashiv Daitai, Rav Yehuda, right, the Amira, who says that a Kesef Sagasa is greater than Kabetzi, he held that you need something more than usual. And according to him, more means more than just a temporary Sevilla. Right? Even though he has a Kabetzi which accomplishes Sevilla, but of course it doesn't mean a Sevilla Gemura, it's just a temporary effect. Like, you know, after a fast day, a person sits down. Just has a little bite that calms him down temporarily. Fill him for the long term. So Kibetza has a Svia effect, but it's only a temporary effect. The difference is you'd have to go beyond that Fiyam Kippur. To be Miyashiv Daite, to achieve Yishiv Adas, you need a bit more than even that Shear of Svia. And that's how he arrives at his Shear that Kesevah Sagasa is greater than a Kibetza. Okay, just to briefly summarize. We discussed the Shir of Kesev Sagasa and Kippur. As Rashi explained, the Isra is not a Chila, rather, Bimavatal, the Inuy, bringing about Yishav Adas, which to the Rabbanu was clear that was speaking about a Shir of Kesev Sagasa. What exactly is this? Rabbi this says, greater than a Kabetza. Rizvit says, it's less than a Kabetza. Kultav to you and Atzlacharab.